we will now move to the urgency motion. Senator Rustin. Huh. Thank you very much, President. Well, I stand today um, to speak on the urgency motion that I've put into this place in relation to I'll the I beg your pardon, Oop. Senator Rustin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll give you the call again, so let me do my bit. Um, Senator Rustin has submitted proposal understanding order 75 today. It's shown at item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? Yes, it is. So, with the concurrence of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with the informal, informal arrangements made by the whips. And I'll call you again, Senator Rustin. And my apologies. Thank you again, President. So today I stand. Um, Supporting the motion that I put into this place in relation to the failure of the Albanese government to consult properly on, well, even at all, on a very important new measure that is going to have a very significant impact on the lives of very many Australians, most particularly vulnerable Australians and those that live in rural, regional, and remote communities. Um, we're calling out the government. We're calling out the government because it doesn't consult. We're calling out the government because it doesn't do its homework. It doesn't do the detail. And we're calling out the government because it does not consider the secondary effects of these announcements. They're all headline and they are no substance. So, first of all, I want to put on the record very, very clearly that the opposition has always and continues to support Australians having access to affordable medications. Um, but the failure to consult has been borne out time and time again since this ill-conceived policy was put into the, uh, the public domain back in April. Um, a great headline. But the consequences of this policy were completely ignored in the policy development. First of all, we know um, that there was no real consultation when it came to the development of the impact analysis. Uh, we have a letter received from the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet and the Office of Impact Assessment. And I want to put this on the public record. To have um, assessed this particular proposal as good practice under the guide the independent assessment would have benefited from more recent public consultations on potential stakeholder impacts, particularly for small businesses and pharmacies in rural and remote areas. Moreover, where stakeholder impacts are difficult to ascertain at this point in time, the independent assessment would, impact assessment would have benefited from more detailed evaluation plan that outlines metrics and data required to monitor the impacts on stakeholders following implementation. A very damning, damning letter back on the basis of the impact assessment that was undertaken by the government. And I have to say, um, I reckon a 12-year-old could have written a better impact assessment than the one we've got here. But most damning in the assessment is on page 28, where the government's own impact assessment on its 60-day dispensing policy says, the community pharmacy sector will be significantly impacted by this proposal. Some pharmacies may even experience cash flow and purchase problems for stock. I mean, this is their impact assessment, but they still decided that they were going to go ahead with it. No regard for the knock-on impacts, but most, most distressingly, there was actually no modelling done. No modelling done. The Minister for Finance, who was representing the Minister for Health in Estimates, actually admitted to the fact that there had not been any modelling done. So we now find out um, through the work of the Pharmacy Guild, and it's not just the Pharmacy Guild, for those opposite who will probably stand and try and and discredit the Pharmacy Guild. It's also the Australian Patients Association, Pain Australia, National Pharmaceutical Services Association and the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia, whose name has gone on to a very credible document that's been written by uh, an eminent economist, economist uh, Henry Erga, uh, Ergas. And it found that the very people who are most likely to be the most negatively impacted by this are elderly people with chronic health conditions and regional Australians. They are the ones that are going to suffer. So we now find out that there is the potential of 665 pharmacies are likely to close, but potentially another 900 will be at risk of closing, and some 20,000 Australians who currently work in the pharmacy sector are likely to lose their job. So time and time again we have asked this government to guarantee that no Australian patient will be worse off either financially or as a result of access to pharmacy by this measure. It's no wonder they've never given us a straight answer. They've just run around the subject because they know that not only will we, the pharmacy sector be significantly imp uh, negatively impacted by this, but they also know that many patients will be negatively impacted as well. But I think one of the most distressing things is just how many secondary impacts 
are likely to result from this. You know, pharmacy closures, reduced hours, reduced services, services that were pre previously provided for free now will be charged. Um, how is this government going to enable shortages to be addressed? What about wastage? That's before we get to pharmacy viability. So we've got a situation here where we've had a government who's rushed to a headline policy. They have taken no regard for the potential impacts. The possibility that this particular policy is going to have significant negative impacts on many millions of Australians has been completely disregarded, despite the fact that the impact assessment clearly outlines it. Subsequent evaluation has un as highlighted, and there has been no Thank you, consultation Senator Rustin, at all. And I take it that you are also moving that motion. I would like to move the motion. Thank you. Senator Tyrrell. <clears throat> pharmacies are running a scare campaign that pharmacists want to clip the ticket. That is just not true. I have spent the past few weeks talking to my local pharmacists in Tassie, and some of them have been in tears. They are scared. At worst, they are looking down the barrel of a policy that will see a lot of them close their doors, and at best, the policy will see some small business pharmacies cutting services, cutting staff and reducing opening hours. And this is what they've told me. Rhys told me about the long shifts his staff did during COVID. When the 60-day dispensing policy comes into effect, he'll have to look at his staff in the eye and say, sorry, paper's not my friend this week. What is it with that? Um, Thanks very much for all your hard work and all your efforts, but I'm going to have to let you go. Marie says Health Minister Mark Butler should visit her pharmacy in East Devonport to see what pharmacies actually do. She said the minister needs to see the vital services they offer for free to people that need them and how much staff care about their customers. Luciana told me the loss of income risks the late night service she provides. She says it absolutely breaks her heart that she won't be able to offer her customers the support they need. Everywhere I go at home, I'm reminded of just how much our communities rely on these pharmacies. In areas like Dover, New Norfolk or Westbury, shutting a pharmacy would be shutting a health care lifeline. The minister needs to go back to the table on this policy. The government should increase the dispensing fee for pharmacists in the community pharmacy agreement to cover the revenue lost by this policy. The government says they're investing $1.2 billion back into pharmacies, but when the cost of these cuts is around $3.5 billion, something doesn't add up. I want people to have cheaper medicine, but ripping the guts out of community pharmacies isn't the way to do it. Thank you, Senator Tyrrell. Senator Steele Don. <coughs> uh, thank you, uh, President. Uh, the Greens have always supported cheaper medicines. In a cost of living crisis where people are literally making choices between paying rent, uh, paying for their medicines, their bills or putting food on the table, the Greens have been supportive of measures that will ease these cost of living pressures. Now, the government has informed the community that the purpose of the proposed changes uh, to the PBS uh, will be to make it easier and cheaper for people to access the medicines that they need. And making it easier and cheaper for people to access medicines that they need is obviously something the Greens support. We believe uh, in the depths of our souls in the importance of the public health care system, of a universal health care system uh, that covers everything from your teeth to your brain to every point of your body, free at the point of use for all. And now, as part of our consideration uh, of 60-day dispensing, I have spoken with pharmacists all over the country um, and heard many concerns of the impact of these measures uh, that they feel may have uh, on their local pharmacies, which they run. Um, and also from community members who rely on community pharmacy. After hearing these uh, pieces of feedback from people, I would very much agree uh, that the Albanese government has not consulted effectively with community pharmacists on how these, impact, how these changes will impact them. I have heard that there will be significant impacts, and it is my view that a way forward would be for the government to bring forward the negotiation of the Community Pharmacy Agreement and start talking with pharmacists now to minimise any adverse impacts of this measure. 
One of the concerns raised by pharmacists uh, is the impact on, uh, of reduced dispensing fees. We are encouraging the government um, to find a way forward on this, uh, for the minister to consider um, the doubling of, defense, uh, of dispensing fees until a new pharmacy agreement has been finalised or to commit to reimbursing any losses at a community pharmacy that can be proven as an unintended impact of, 60 day dispensing, of the 60-day dispensing measure. The Greens will not be supporting uh, this urgency motion today. Um, but I do want to reiterate, and I want to speak directly to the Minister in this statement, uh, that this should not be taken as a final position of the Greens in relation uh, to the proposed regulation. The Greens party room will continue to negotiate to ensure uh, that these regulations do not have unintended consequences um, and that they you, actually Senator achieve Steele, their intended for, goals. Uh, Contributing has expired. Senator Askew. President. I too rise to highlight the government's failure to consult in relation to a policy that has the potential to destroy lives and livelihoods in Tasmania and across Australia. The Albanese Labor government's change to 60-day dispensing for some medicines could cripple our community pharmacists. In a poor attempt to save consumers money in this cost of living crisis, the Albanese government announced its 60-day dispensing reforms in the days before the May 2023 budget. While this announcement was greeted with much fanfare from those on the other side of this chamber, there were many who were not celebrating. As has been stated earlier, the Coalition strongly supports affordable access to medicines for all Australians. In fact, in government, we committed to lowering the cost of medicines and approved more than 2,900 new or amended listings on the Pharmaceutical Benefit Scheme at an overall investment of around $16.5 billion. However, we do not support affordable medicines at the expense of pharmacists. Within hours of this announcement, I had received emails from community pharmacists who feared for their futures and that of the businesses that they had worked hard to build in communities around my home state of Tasmania. These emails multiplied in my inbox as pharmacists in incredible distress called my electorate office and dropped in to voice their concern. When I arranged to meet with two pharmacists as part of a Senate tour with my Tasmanian Liberal colleagues, we were met by 12 from the states north and northwest, all of whom were desperate to share how these changes would impact them. Community pharmacies, pharmacies in rural and regional areas will be disproportionately impacted by the changes to 60-day dispensing, so much so that many will be forced to reduce their opening hours, cut the services they offer or even close altogether. Without pharmacies and bulk billing or permanent GPs, small rural and regional towns, like so many in Tasmania, are at risk of becoming healthcare deserts. This means many more people will present to emergency departments because they can't access the local healthcare services they need, which we all know is not going to save anyone money in the long run. Pharmacists see their patients significantly more than doctors, especially older customers who regularly seek advice around medicines, symptoms they are experiencing and for ongoing monitoring for chronic conditions. This proposal will cost pharmacy owners thousands of dollars with a likely 30 per cent drop from their bottom line. One pharmacist calculated this policy would cost them $104,000 annually, while others were up to $500,000 per annum. That's a lot, of business, a lot of money for a small business. These pharmacists told us they would be forced to charge for services they currently provide at no or minimal cost to patients. These are important services like the preparation of Webster packs, reviewing medications, often in the patient's homes, servicing aged care facilities and nursing homes, home delivery for those who can't make it to the pharmacy, script requests, blood pressure checks, triage and doctor referrals. The 60-day dispensing plan could also drive up the cost of other pharmacy items as pharmacists try to recoup the funds they have lost as a result of this policy. Those opposite will tell you they are reinvesting into community pharmacies, but we need to read the fine print on that promise. For example, doubling the regional pharmacy maintenance program won't help the thousands of pharmacies that are already ineligible for it, and not all pharmacists are geared for vaccination services. The 60-day dispensing policy is billed as a cost-saving measure, but it is a measure that will be introduced at the expense of pharmacists, their patients and the wider community. 
and in many cases it won't actually save money for the people who need it the most, because once they've reached the safety net, their medications are often provided free. So who is really benefiting from this poorly thought out plan? The government, who are banking the savings and making pharmacists wear the pain. So something promoted as a saving for consumers risks the viability of our local community pharmacies. We are left with a community pharmacy or pharmacies running on skeleton staff, opening less hours and offering less services to customers that they've served in their local community for many years. It does not make good business sense. The government's failure to consult prior to their grandstanding announcement in the lead up to the budget will result in poorer service provision to our rural and regional communities. The coalition does support cheaper access to medicines, but not at the expense of small business. This is just another clear example of the consequences of this Labor government's policy brain snaps that have never been properly considered or consulted. Thank you, Senator Askew. Senator Payman. Thank you, President. I rise to oppose the motion moved by Senator Rustin. This motion is nothing more than a scare campaign against the Albanese Labor government's cheaper medicines policy, which will halve the cost of, mo of more than 300 medicines for millions of Australians. From 1st of September, everyone with Medicare card will be able to save up to $180 a year if their medicine is eligible for 60 days dispensing. This policy has been enthusiastically welcomed by health organisations, including the Consumers Health Forum, the Heart Foundation, the Lung Foundation, the Breast Cancer Network, the Rural Doctors Association, the AMA and the RACGP. Many countries, including New Zealand, Canada, France, Germany, Ireland and Norway, have well-established dispensing quantity policies of up to three months, one month more than what we are proposing. Despite this, the Noalition still say no. No to cheaper medicines, no to cost of living relief and no to what's best for Australians. And let's not forget that this policy was first recommended to the former government in 2018 by the Pharmaceutical Benefits Advisory Committee. And what did they do? Absolutely nothing, costing Australians hundreds of millions of dollars in lost savings. Fast forward to 2023, and instead of supporting our plan for cheaper medicines, they jump on a scare campaign, claiming the pharmacists will lose their jobs and pharmacies will close. Let's set the record straight. Australian pharmacies do so much more than just dispense medicine and the Albanese government is supporting our trusted pharmacists to play an integral and even more central role in the health care of Australians. Not to mention the fact that every dollar, every dollar that the government saves through 60-day dispensing will be reinvested into community pharmacies. This $1.2 billion reinvestment includes increasing the budget for community pharmacy programs under the 7th Community Pharmacy Agreement, introducing nationally consistent pharmacy payments for opioid dependence treatment services. Number three, subsidising community pharmacies to provide vaccines on the National Immunisation Program and increasing support for aged care residents through community pharmacy programs. Now, the government has also taken steps to alleviate the pressure on pharmacies by implementing the policy in three tranches, giving pharmacists adequate time to transition to the new dispensing arrangements. In recognition of the vital role of pharmacies in our regions, I'm also pleased that the government will introduce targeted programs to ensure rural and regional pharmacies can successfully adjust to the changes. Those opposite would like you to believe that this policy is bad for the regions, yet the National Rural Health Alliance has endorsed the policy saying it will reduce the cost, travel and time for rural and remote people to pick up repeats or new medication. As part of the package of reinvestment, the government is also doubling the total budget for the regional pharmacy maintenance allowance. There are currently over 1,000 pharmacies in regional, rural and remote Australia that access this allowance and under the increase 
Australia's most rural pharmacies may be eligible for almost $100,000 in government assistance. Now, Senator Rustin has also claimed there has been a lack of consultation with pharmacists. Firstly, it's a bit rich coming from those opposite, um, moving a motion about lack of consultation when they don't even want First Nations people to have a voice. Secondly, it's completely untrue. Order. The Albanese government has Order worked and continues lip. to work with all parts of the pharmacy sector on the implementation of this policy. I have personally met with numerous pharmacists in my home state of WA. I have listened to their concerns and I recognise their vital contribution to, to the health of our community. I'll also be hosting an online forum next Tuesday for the pharmacists that have contacted my office. I can assure you that we will continue to engage constructively with all stakeholders because what we want, what we want is to, for Australians to have access to cheaper medicines while ensuring pharmacists feel valued for the work that they do. And while those opposites focus on scare campaigns, we will continue focusing on delivering real solutions. Thank you, Deputy President. Senator Brown. Thank you. Um, Acting Deputy President, uh, and I'd like to firstly congratulate Senator Payman on what was an excellent contribution and also congratulate her on the work that she's doing uh, in her great state of Western Australia, not as good as Tasmania, but we can't have everything. Now, this um, MPI that we are discussing today is about the Albanese government are halving the costs of medicines for around 6 million uh, Australians. The government supports affordable medicines, and the opposition, through this motion, is more interested in scare campaigns. The Albanese government understands that many Australians are doing it tough. That is why we are determined to take the pressure off household budgets wherever we can. And that is why we're making medicines cheaper for millions of Australians. On January 1st, for the first time in the 75-year history of the PBS, the general co-payment was reduced from $42.50 to $30. In the first three months of this year, 5.1 million prescriptions have been cheaper, saving Australians more than $58 million. For Tasmanians, that is over over 185,000 cheaper scripts and over $2 million saved. And that is money that's in your pockets to help ease the cost of living pressures. In this budget, we've gone further. The budget includes a measure that will allow millions of Australians to buy two months' worth of medicine for the price of a single prescription for hundreds of common conditions. From the 1st of September this year, with a staged implementation, general patients will be able to save up to $180 a year if their medicine is able to be prescribed for 60 days. $180 a year, Acting Deputy President. After a decade of inaction, Labor is making medicines cheaper for Australians. And that's why this policy has been welcomed. And let's have a look at some of the people, some of the organisations that have welcomed this policy. Arthritis Australia, Diabetes Australia, the Heart Foundation, the Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine, the National Rural Health Alliance, the Rural Doctors Association, the Council of On the Aging the Breast Cancer Network. The Australian Medical Association says this policy is, and I quote, a win for patients that should lead to better medicine adherence and ultimately better health outcomes with reduced pressure on the health system, end quote. Not, not like what is being peddled here in this motion. The AMA is saying it's a win and it will lead to better med uh, medicine adherence and ultimately better health outcomes. 
Now, the president of the College of General Practi uh, Practitioners has said, and I quote, this change has been recommended because it is in the best interests of patients. And I'm pleased that the government has heeded the expert advice, end quote. Now, the policy has been welcomed by the Consumer Health Forum, who have said that the policy, and I quote, shows that the government is listening to health consumers. Every dollar saved at the pharmacy is money that can be spent on groceries or rent. So there we have it. We have the AMA, the College of General Practitioners, the Consumer Health Forum, so many other organisations welcoming this policy. We know that making medicines cheaper is good for the hip pockets of Australians, but it's also good for their health. And it's not me saying it, the AMA is saying it, other um, organisations are saying it. And in Tasmania, I know that these changes will make a significant difference to so many. Senator Davey. Thank you very much. Uh, Acting Deputy President, and I must say I find it incredibly uh, um, concerning that Senator Payman has compared industry consultation with the voice to parliament. Is she honestly suggesting that for consultation to be true and proper, we need to constitutionally enshrine organisations to be able to consult with them? It was a farcical comparison, absolutely farcical, which is exactly what we see from this government time and time again, particularly when it comes to policies that most significantly impact rural and regional Australia. The decision to change the current dispensing policy without proper consultation of the very people who it is going to impact the most, being community pharmacies, is just the last in a long line of disastrous decisions for our regional communities. Now, let me say from the outset that I am absolutely all for cheaper medicines, and that's why I'm very proud of the record that the Liberals and Nationals had in government of approving PBS medicines on the pharmaceutical benefit schemes, saving literally thousands of dollars from the pockets of our sick Australians. But we did that with no impact, zero impact on the bottom line of community pharmacies. The government makes big noises about saving patients $180 a year on their medicines through this policy. What about the $180,000 a year per pharmacy that will be stripped from their business bottom line? That is money they use to pay rents, utilities and staff. Respected economist Henry Ergas has estimated about $4.5 billion will be taken from community pharmacies. That puts at risk 665 pharmacies and as many as 20,000 jobs. In regional areas like where I live, pharmacies are often the first and only support medical support in a country town. Across Australia, there are 320 towns that don't have a doctor, but they do have a pharmacy. And I ask you, what will the savings mean to the people of those towns if they lose their pharmacy and they have to get in the car and drive a two-hour round trip just to get their scripts filled? It makes a mockery of the $180 a year the government claims will be saved. I recently met with um, the Port Macquarie pharmacist Judy Plunkett, who told us of the services her pharmacy provides. It's not just filling scripts. She takes blood pressure. She helps set up CPAP machines for people with sleep apnea. She gives vaccinations. She goes into the aged care homes and delivers and dispenses their pharmace pharmaceuticals. She fills Webster's packs for her aged clients. A lot of these services she does for free because she can afford it because of 
uh, her, her business bottom line, but she won't be able to afford it if $180,000 a year is stripped. The capital chemist in Braidwood, which currently employs eight staff and is open extended operating hours, will not be able to continue to service that community at the same level if uh, they lose $180,000 per year. So um, we know, we've already been told that banks are circling the pharmacists because they're seeing the impact that this bad policy will have. The Albanese government must confront the fact that the changes will drastically affect Australians' ability to access health care through pharmacies, particularly in regional areas. We are, of course, supportive of the intention to reduce the cost of medicines on Australians, but we must ensure that people have access and equity of access. So I can access a pharmacy in Daniloquin just like someone living in Chatswood or the North Shore can access their pharmacy. There is absolutely no point in having two months worth of dispensing if the pharmacist in your town closes down. So, Senators, the question is that the motion moved by Senator Rustin be agreed to. Those that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Aye. I think the ayes have it. Aye. Division required. Ring the bells. <laughs>
Lock the doors. <laughs> so the question is that the urgency motion is moved by Senator Rustin be agreed to. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator O'Sullivan as teller for the ayes and Senator Urquhart as teller for the noes. There being 28 ayes and 32 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative.